this is the breakfast video you've been waiting for. In this mega video, we're going to talk about everything you need to know about a healthy and balanced breakfast on the Mediterranean diet. We're gonna go over how to approach thinking about a balanced breakfast. We'll talk about some breakfast ideas that you'd wanna eat if you have a sweet tooth or if you like some savory foods. And then I'm going to share with you what I typically eat for breakfast, which is a bit quasi Mediterranean and Central European. And then finally, I'm going to go over the typical breakfast mistakes that people make and how to fix them. So by the end of this video, your mouth will be watering, ready to get up tomorrow for the healthiest and most delicious balanced breakfast of your life. Hey there, I'm Dr. Anna. I'm a medical doctor. I was trained in Italy. And on this channel, you're gonna learn how to master your health with the Mediterranean diet. All right, let's dive in. So up first, we're gonna talk about our breakfast ideas for the Mediterranean diet. Breakfast is of course a way for us to jumpstart our metabolism, our energy, and set the day right. We wanna eat a breakfast that is nutrient dense with lots of vitamins and minerals, but making sure that it is not too sugary or processed so that would cause us to have a crash in our energy midway through the morning. Of course, there is no better way to start the day than with a nutrient packed breakfast that will fire up your energy to sustain you for many hours. So hear this, I need you to understand that when thinking about a healthy balanced breakfast and really any healthy balanced meal, there are three things you want to make sure are included every time you have a meal and every time you have breakfast. What are those things? Fiber, healthy fat, protein. If you hit all three of these components, which I like to call the healthy trifecta, you are setting yourself upright with good nutrition to ease digestion. Now, why do we care about digestion? Well, digestion is obviously an important part of eating a meal and reaping the health benefits from it. Our bodies are meant to eat food, not just nutrients. The digestive process, which is the process that after you're chewing food, goes to your stomach, it starts to get broken down and a lot of chemical reactions are happening, and then it starts moving further down the pipeline. But in order for your body to be able to extract the nutrition, so the vitamins, the minerals, and other really important properties of food like anti-inflammatory properties, there needs to be enough time. And what slows digestion down? Well, those three things that I just mentioned, it is fiber, healthy fat, and protein. All three of these things slow the digestion down so that our body has enough time to get all the nutrition out of the food into the bloodstream and ultimately circulating our body so it can go to all the cells in our organs that need it so they can do their metabolism thing and our body can stay alive and healthy. By eliminating these components from a meal, but especially from breakfast, you are risking causing your blood sugar to spike pretty quickly. Now that is obviously not healthy for our body in and of itself. Those of you who might have diabetes are probably quite aware of blood sugar and how that can cause problems in your body, but know that even if you don't have diabetes, we don't want our blood sugar to spike really high and then crash because that's going to tank our energy and we're not gonna feel well. And that will lead us to feeling desperate, craving things, and probably not making the wisest decisions when it comes to what we're gonna eat next. By the way, if you're finding this information useful so far, and I really hope that you are, please subscribe to this channel because I want you to keep getting all of this important nutrition information and helpful tips for how you can improve your diet and overall health. I don't want you to miss a beat. Okay, so that was a little bit of the philosophy of what we need to include in our meal, but maybe you're like me and you're like, Dr. Anna, I just want the practical information. Tell me the foods. Well, I really don't like telling people what to eat. It's not my preference, but I understand that some of you are craving that kind of information. So here's what I suggest. Start the day with plants, plant-based foods. A lot of people tend to go for a sweet tasting food. So there's nothing that makes more sense than some whole fruit in its fresh form or even from frozen. Fruit is giving us some nice nutrition. Usually it's packed with vitamin C and fiber. Number two, the next thing that you wanna be eating in the morning are things like nuts or seeds. Nuts or seeds are super nutrient dense. They have all three of the things that I talked about earlier that you want in a healthy breakfast. They have fiber, they have healthy fats, and they have protein. That's why nuts and seeds are like nature's gift to us because you have a food that packs in all three things at once. And you can choose if you wanna eat nuts or seeds in their whole form, which are gonna be kind of crunchy, or if you prefer, eat it as a nut butter. Peanut butter, almond butter, cashew butter, 
you choose a variety you like, but all of them are going to be giving you that nice nutrition. Okay, so what's my third food for you? Well, it's some kind of a whole grain. Now, oats are a typical go-to in the morning and they can be cooked in an oatmeal. So that's really nice in the colder weather when we want a hot meal in the morning. Some people also eat it in the muesli form, which are oats and some other nuts or seeds or dried fruit with some liquid component kind of eating like a cereal, or maybe you need that crunch and you wanna make some granola at home. You can even substitute oats for having things like quinoa, which is really a pseudo grain. We call it a grain, but it's not quite a grain and it's got a lot of protein in it. So whichever variety you prefer, I want you to think about incorporating some kind of a whole grain first thing in the morning. Now, you might wanna bind all of these things together into a bowl form, a porridge if it's cooked down, or blended together in a smoothie. So consider something like a yogurt, a cottage cheese, or a ricotta. These are dairy sources that provide us a little bit more protein. If you're avoiding dairy, then try something else that is soy-based or any other nut-based milk. Now, as I mentioned, you can have this in a bowl form if you're gonna be sitting down, but you might be a busy person. You might have to get in the car early in the morning. I can't recommend enough a smoothie. Smoothies are really convenient. You can take them on the go and you can pack in so much nutrition. All of the ingredients that I talked about before, fruit that's fresh or in frozen form, nuts or seeds or nut butters. You can have liquid protein rich foods like yogurt. What's nice is you can also throw on some protein powder to really up the protein content or even sneak in some vegetables like spinach. But here's a pro tip for you. I definitely suggest not blending your smoothies at the crack of dawn. Your neighbors are going to hate you. <laughs> so if you're considering eating a smoothie for breakfast, but you have to leave the house early in the morning, try blending that smoothie the night before. Just don't forget to grab it from the fridge when you're running out the door. Believe me, it's worth it. Nobody wants to be woken up at 6 or 7 a.m. by the sound of a loud blender. Next, we're going to go over some savory breakfast ideas for those of us who do not have a sweet tooth. So the way I like to think about this is that in this region of the world, there are certain key foods or key ingredients that are repeated in many dishes and in many meals across all of the cultures of the Mediterranean. So these are really four categories of things. You can think about this as vegetables, protein sources, whole grains, and then extra flavorings. By knowing these foods and these key ingredients, we have everything we need to make literally anything. Okay, let's start with the vegetables in this cuisine. These are things like tomatoes, cucumbers, onions, olives, garlic. Then we have our proteins, things like feta cheese, egg, tahini, which is a sesame paste, hummus, which is ground up chickpeas that also has lemon juice, olive oil, and tahini. And then they're gonna be things like smoked fish, like a lox, or sardines, mackerel, anchovies. And then we have our whole grains, rice, wheat, quinoa, fresh bread, wraps, and anything that you can make from flour. And finally, we have our flavorings. In the Mediterranean region, there are lots of spices and herbs used. Things like fresh basil, thyme, rosemary, literally any herb or spice you can think of. Okay, now that we know what our key ingredients are that can be included in a savory breakfast on the Mediterranean diet, here are my top four favorite ideas. Number one, making a toast. What's really popular nowadays is something like an avocado toast, where you take a really big piece of fresh bread, maybe you heat it up, you toast it, smash some avocado on it, and then put on top of it other things that you might like, like an egg, or it could be sliced tomato, or it could be chopped onion, cucumber, drizzle it with some olive oil, put a little bit of spice on it. You can get fancy with this, but it doesn't have to be avocado toast. Something that we like to do in my family is put on a smoked fish spread, so it's called a white fish. It could even be like a cream cheese or a creme fraiche. You could even put on mozzarella cheese, top it with some vegetables and a little bit of a dressing, like a lemon dressing. But the idea is just creating an open-faced sandwich. And if you are gluten-free and you don't eat bread, you can substitute the toast with a rice cake. Idea number two, this is going to be eating eggs as the foundation of your breakfast. And not in the way we're used to doing it in the US. I'm not talking about eggs, bacon, pancakes, waffles. I'm talking about eggs combined with the vegetables and the other foods that we already talked about before. So this might be an omelet or an egg scramble, including things like feta cheese, mushrooms, spinach, tomatoes, you name it. Whatever vegetable you wanna throw in, you can. The other way this is often eaten is as a boiled egg, either a hard boiled or a soft boiled egg. You can also have those eggs 
a side a piece of toast. Okay, breakfast idea number three. This is something that comes from Israel that I think is so tasty and it's called shakshuka. And these are poached eggs in a tomato and pepper sauce. This is something that can be really spicy if you like a little heat or you can make it mild, herby, you name it. But it is so delicious. You often cook it in a skillet on the stove top and it's really easy. There are no cooking skills required. Now, before I give you my favorite breakfast idea that you may never have heard of before, I want you to comment below and share what you usually eat for breakfast and share ideas with our healthy community. Here's my fourth breakfast idea. This is something that I discovered when I did a study abroad semester in college in the south of France, and it is called pisaladière. This is a flatbread that comes from the town of Nice. It's a specialty where they take pizza dough, like a regular flatbread baked in the oven, and on top of it is caramelized onions, olives, and sardines. I know this sounds crazy, but it is one of the tastiest things I've ever had before in my whole life. It is crispy, it is soft, the flavors are popping, it's unbelievable, and it'd be really easy to make it if you wanted to. Now, the reason this is similar to pizza, cool fact, the town of Nice, which is part of France, used to be part of Italy. So the food of that region is very influenced by the Italian cuisine. You get a little bit of both worlds, the French and the Italian combined in the... Uh, flavors are amazing. Now I'm going to reveal for you guys how I approach my breakfast following a Mediterranean diet framework and a general healthy and nutritious framework for eating. So before I reveal to you what my favorite healthy breakfast is, I want you to comment below and share with us, what do you like to eat for breakfast? What's your typical go-to first thing in the morning before you're running off to your day? So I'm going to explain my go-to breakfast in two variations. The first is going to be when I have more time. So this might be a day where I'm working from home, maybe it's a research day for me, and I have access to my kitchen and I can sit down and enjoy a little bit of a slower meal. And my second variation for you is going to be a faster paced meal. Maybe this is a hospital day for me. I'm seeing patients, I'm running around, and I really don't have time to sit down for 30 minutes and just focus on eating. So depending on your situation and your lifestyle, you can choose which way you want to go. So here we go. My slower version of breakfast that I absolutely love any time of the year is a breakfast bowl. Now, all you got to do to set this up for yourself is grab some kind of a fruit that you like, grab some kind of a nut or a seed that you like to include, throw in some grains that you enjoy, maybe they're oats or quinoa, and then top it off with something that binds it all together. So that could be a yogurt, a ricotta cheese, cottage cheese, maybe it's a non-dairy yogurt form, or even something like chia pudding. The goal is to bring all of those nutritional components together. We're gonna have our sources of protein, which is going to be coming from maybe the dairy source, things that I mentioned already, or the nuts or the seeds. And then we're gonna have some fiber in there, which is mostly gonna come from the fruit, the nuts and the seeds, and the grains. And then finally, the healthy healthy fats, which of course will be provided by our nuts and seeds. Now, when it comes to the fruit in your bowl, I always enjoy going for something in season. So in the summer, that's going to be berries or stone fruits like peaches, plums, nectarines, apricots, or apple or pear in the fall. You get the idea. Buying in season produce is probably going to taste a lot better and it's going to cost less. You don't have to pay for the import and the export costs that are added on when things are shipped from really far away. Plus, you're probably going to be benefiting your local farmers and I'm sure they appreciate that. So going for a breakfast bowl that can have different variations throughout the calendar year is also going to help you prevent getting bored with what you eat for breakfast. Now, I know there are some of you out there that just wanna eat the same thing every day so you don't have to think about it and that's fine, but it's always encouraged to eat a variety of foods because that actually allows us to get better nutrition into our bodies. Okay, so what's the second variation of this breakfast when you just don't have a lot of time? Well, given that I'm still going to try to hit all of those three nutritional components, having a little bit of protein, fiber, and healthy fat, I'm going to make it as simple as I can. I usually grab a piece of fruit and then have a handful of nuts. Now, sometimes if I can sit down for a few minutes, that's going to be something like sliced apple with peanut butter or almond butter. But I have absolutely had days where I literally have to take a handful of nuts and just throw them in my mouth and get going. So if that's you and you're in a situation where you are rushing around, it is probably one of the best ways that you can get all three components of nutrition in at the same time. Nuts, provide us a lot of fiber, healthy fats, and protein. Now, if I am in a situation where maybe I'm traveling, I'm really desperate, I don't even have access to something like a fresh piece of fruit, I will often pack with me a granola bar. And I do try to make sure I'm buying the type of granola bars that provide some protein. Usually there are things like pea protein inside of them that at least are gonna give you the nutrition that your body needs. But not all granola bars are created equally. Make sure to watch out for those that have a lot of added sugar, because at a certain 
certain point, some granola bars can really be considered candy bars. If you've made it to this point in the video so far, I wanna give you a bonus breakfast idea, and it is to have a breakfast smoothie. Now, this is one of my absolute favorite things to make in the morning because it is so versatile and it's really easy to bring with you when you're on the go. The nice thing about a smoothie is it can kind of taste like whatever you want, and you can add protein powders, nut butters, grains, things like oats, or even cooked quinoa. You can throw it in there and it's just going to blend up and taste amazing. The reason why I say, if I'm planning ahead I go for a smoothie is because early in the morning I try to avoid getting my blender going, waking up my neighbors maybe before seven o'clock in the morning. So often if I need to run out the door and I wanna have a smoothie with me, I plan ahead the night before and blend that up, pop it in the fridge. And here's a double bonus tip for you. You can actually blend a smoothie and then pour it in a bowl and add something like granola or oats on top of it. So you make a smoothie bowl. If any of you have never tried this, please do this as soon as possible, you will thank and now let's dive in to the four most common mistakes people make when it comes to breakfast and how to avoid making them. So in fourth place of the breakfast foods to avoid, we have overly sugary breakfast foods. So these are going to be the typical things that people are eating if they're in a cafe or at some kind of a coffee shop anything that's really sweetened and dessert-like. I'm talking about pastries, cookies, sweetened muffins, even cake. And then we have donuts, and then we have croissants, or even really sugary breakfast cereals that are often marketed to kids. So why do we wanna avoid this? Well, it's no question that a lot of added sugar in our diet causes problems in our health. We know that a lot of added sugar is highly correlated with obesity and weight gain. And it just so happens that some of these really sugary foods tend to be very processed with a lot of other refined ingredients like refined grains and refined oils. And since a lot of these things are baked goods, they're usually carrying with them a source of saturated fat like butter or lard, animal sources of fat that are in fact linked to increase risks of heart disease. So aside from the medical stuff, eating a lot of processed sugar, a lot of white refined sugar is just going to make our energy spike and then crash. What's actually happening inside of our body when that happens is that as we're eating all of this added sugar, it gets quickly released into our bloodstream, which is causing our pancreas to work really hard to produce a lot of insulin. So the blood sugar spikes, and then we get this insulin spike. And of course, after a spike, we're going to have a crash. And that's when we feel really crummy just a few minutes or even a couple hours after a very sugary meal. In kids, this is often going to result in them being really cranky and maybe fidgety and fussy, but quite honestly, that doesn't just happen in kids, it also happens in us adults. So all in all, eating a lot of added sugar is just not good for us and it's going to make us feel pretty lousy. All right, in third place of the breakfast foods that we want to avoid, we have highly processed foods with lots of refined oils. And a lot of these foods are going to overlap with the things we mentioned at our fourth place. So these are going to be things like donuts, cakes, cinnamon buns, anything that's really oily or deep fried. And a lot of these foods are marketed to us as breakfast items, but please don't be fooled. These are not nutritious foods to be eating at any time of the day but especially not as the first meal of the day. So we know that these oils are not healthy when they're really processed and refined. And what happens is that the chemical structure of some of these oils can change. This is commonly seen in a deep fryer where those oils are refried and refried again. And this can change the molecular structure to something called a trans fat. Trans fats are like the devil inside of our body. They absolutely increase our risk for heart disease, things like fatty plaque buildup that can then lead to heart attacks or strokes. And the FDA knows that they're bad for us and has formally banned them not so long ago. Yet, they can still be found in foods because when we have deep fried foods, that oil can still get altered to create a trans fat. So we need to be aware of this and we need to understand that eating lots of these foods will probably cause consequences on our health. So if we're interested in eating a healthy diet and we're trying to follow a Mediterranean approach to eating, these kinds of oily processed foods are just a no-go when it comes to our breakfast. And another point about this is that when we're eating foods that have a lot of added oil and processed oil, they're going to be very calorie dense. They're going to provide a lot of calories to our body. Usually those calories are devoid of nutrients that are really healthy for us. 
things that we'd want to be eating in the morning, calcium rich foods, foods with fiber, foods with lots of vitamins and minerals. And so by eating very calorie dense foods that don't provide us nutrition, that's where the term empty calories really comes from. And eating something with empty calories as the first meal of the day is definitely not setting us up for a successful day. Keep in mind that these foods, while very delicious, are probably going to give us short term satisfaction, but ultimately, long-term guilt. And if this video is working for you so far and you're learning something new, I'd like you to please hit the subscribe button because it helps get these videos out to more people who deserve to learn this information. Okay, in second place of the breakfast foods that we'd want to avoid, it's to not eat any whole real foods. So this would be like avoiding fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts or seeds, even legumes and healthy oils like olive oil. So by avoiding those foods, we are not giving our body a lot of the essential vitamins, minerals, and fiber that our body really needs. And the way I see it is the following. We have about three chances a day to get the essential nutrients that we need into our body. We have three meals and by eating nutrient dense, whole real foods, we're probably going to meet all of our needs without having to think about this. But if we're throwing our breakfast away and we're avoiding eating these whole real foods, we're eating calories that aren't giving our body nutrition, and then that actually puts pressure on us to try to pack in the nutrients at just two more meals for the day or even one meal. And where people really fall into this trap is that by avoiding whole, real, natural food, they're avoiding nutrients that they could be getting with food that bumps up their need to think about something like supplementation, which just costs more money. Our body needs the right amount of vitamins, minerals, protein, fiber, to complete all of the needs it has for us to function normally, to have a healthy immune system, for our brain to work, for our heart to be healthy for us, for us to have strong muscles and bones and joints so that we can live a long time without being in pain or having health problems. If we're not taking the time to consider all of these things, we will wind up regretting it. Now, there is one caveat that I'm going to throw in here that's a little bit in the gray zone. And it's something that a lot of people are eating with their breakfast. And this is juice. Juice, often coming from fruit, is one of these tricky topics and it's pretty debated in the world of nutrition. The thing about juices is that when they come from natural foods like fruit, they will probably provide our body with some nutrition. Things like vitamins, vitamin C for example. Or if they're from dark fruits like berries, they might have antioxidants in there. And what about if we're juicing things ourselves? So maybe we have a juice press in our house and we can literally slice through an orange and squeeze it and enjoy it for what it is. And quite honestly, in the Mediterranean region, most people are having juice with their breakfast, especially a fresh pressed juice. But what happens is when we remove the fiber from the food, so basically we're not eating the fruit in its whole form and instead we're just extracting the juice. We're extracting out all of the sugary parts of it without the fiber, that is going to cause our blood sugar to spike a lot faster. And as we talked about earlier in the video, when our blood sugar spikes quickly, it causes our pancreas to work really hard to produce enough insulin to meet that demand. And over time, this is really not good for our pancreas. We also run the risk of having something called insulin resistance that can develop, which is the leading cause of type two diabetes. Now I'm not saying that juice is causing type two diabetes, but you can kind of understand how if we're eating a lot of really sugary foods without the fiber that's gonna help slow down that digestion of the sugar, we are setting ourselves up for a little bit more of a challenge. Now where this could be kind of in balance is the following. Either you're not having juices that often and it's not every single day, and if it is, it's not that much volume, or you're making juices yourself that are from things that are a little bit less sugary than just fruit. Maybe you're making juice from celery and it incorporates a little bit of carrot or beet or apple, but maybe it has ginger in there. There are lots of creative juices that people can make that are not necessarily as high in the sugar content as something like a straight orange juice, all right? Now, what do we have at first place for the breakfast foods that many people avoid? Well, this mistake is to not eat any protein. So this is kind of a no brainer, but not eating any protein is really setting yourself up for a lot of difficulty for many reasons. We know that protein is one of our three essential nutrients that are our macromolecules. We have carbs, fat, and protein. 
Protein is required for our body to be able to grow, to repair itself. If we get an injury, even something like a little bruise, believe it or not, we need protein to help process that along. Our entire body is actually made up of protein. So if we're not having enough protein, we're really causing our body to strain itself and put us at risk for having problems in our metabolic health. Now, one of the reasons things like milk is so heavily marketed to kids and the reason milk actually exists in the first place as a part of this whole natural world is that children, when they're growing, need enough protein. Now they also need other nutrients that come in things like milk, such as calcium, but protein is one of the main players here. If we avoid a protein rich breakfast, we are setting ourselves up for having blood sugar spikes and crashes because protein helps slow down our digestion. We're setting ourselves up for not having the body as strong as it can be. We're setting ourselves up for not having a good amount of growth and repair in our body at times when we need it the most, like in our adolescence, or if we're pregnant, or if we're trying to build muscle in the gym. And believe it or not, there's a lot of research now coming out about low protein in middle age and older adults, putting older adults at higher risk for frailty and things like falls and fractures, and even problems with our brain. Protein is just essential at all stages of life and most folks are not getting enough. So now, if you're still with me in this video, comment and share below with us. Which of these things do you have struggle with? Are you avoiding some of these in your own breakfast without realizing it? Let us know. Please don't be shy. Nobody is perfect. Even I have trouble with some of these things at certain times, like croissants are my favorite thing ever. So the more we can share and support each other, the better we're all gonna do. Okay, let's rewind a second. Now that we know what breakfast mistakes many people are making, let's flip this equation around so that by doing the exact opposite, we are automatically setting ourselves up for success. So what does this look like? First thing, including foods in our breakfast that do not have any added refined sugar. So this would be in turn treating things like pastries, desserts, cake, cookies, muffins, biscuits, donuts, sugary breakfast cereals as more of a treat and not as a staple of our daily diet. So by avoiding these really sugary foods in our breakfast, we know that we're not setting ourselves up for that metabolic mayhem that we described before with the blood sugar spiking really high, then the insulin spiking really high, then our pancreas getting really angry at us and setting ourselves up for insulin resistance and possibly even type two diabetes. If you have diabetes already, this to me is absolutely fundamental to get down, to not be eating foods with a lot of added sugar ever, but especially not in the first meal of the day. So not eating these foods is setting you up for success automatically. Now our second group of food that we wanna incorporate as part of our healthy and balanced breakfast are things like unprocessed and unrefined fats and fatty foods. So this is going to be our sources of healthy fat, nuts, seeds, avocado, olives and olive oil, fatty fish, any of those types of foods are really common in the Mediterranean diet and it's part of what makes the Mediterranean diet so healthy for us. If we're eliminating the very processed, very refined oily foods and instead we're eating foods that are full of natural healthy fat, then we are definitely giving our body the nutrition it needs. All right, third group of foods that we are going to wanna incorporate are whole, natural, real food that comes directly from nature. The easiest way I can think about this is that if you see the food and it looks exactly the way it did when it came off of the tree, the shrub, the vine, or the plant, or the animal itself, then that's the kind of food you wanna be eating most of the time, if not all of the time. So of course, we're talking about whole vegetables, whole fruits, nuts and seeds, whole grains, whole form legumes, beans and lentils. And then we have eggs and dairy products, things that are derived from milk, but made into healthy foods like yogurt. And then fish or even poultry or some meat as naturally as it comes from the real world. All right, in our fourth category of foods that we are then going to wanna eat as part of our healthy balanced breakfast are protein rich foods. And the Mediterranean diet is so abundant in healthy sources of protein. We're going to be incorporating things like protein rich yogurt, like a Greek yogurt and healthy cheeses and nuts and seeds and whole grains that can provide our body some protein. And then things like beans, 
or healthy fish. Protein is so important for our body. We want to make sure we're incorporating protein at every single meal and breakfast included. But we cannot conclude our discussion here about healthy Mediterranean diet breakfasts and mistakes that people are making without pointing out this very important one. And this is something that so many people mistake the Mediterranean diet for when they hear the term. If you are traveling to the Mediterranean region and you're going on vacation or you're going around and you go into a typical coffee bar or you talk to some local people or you even watch what they're eating, you might see them eating a very processed, refined, sugary breakfast themselves. It's not necessarily what people are eating every day in their houses, but a typical thing that you can find in Southern Spain, Italy, Greece, are things like going to a coffee bar, standing, taking an espresso, taking a coffee, having a pastry, having a fresh pressed juice, and that's it. The challenge is, Yes, these are breakfasts in the Mediterranean region, but that does not necessarily mean they are according to the traditional Mediterranean diet. And this is where so many people get it confused. Yes, the Mediterranean diet includes diets from the entire Mediterranean region, which is many different cuisines and many different countries' foods. The problem is the traditional diets are the ones that we're talking about the ones that have been eaten for generations before we started manufacturing food the way we do in this very modern globalized system. So just keep it in mind that there is a difference between a Mediterranean diet breakfast that's healthy and natural and wholesome and a breakfast from the Mediterranean, which could be anything. All right, so now that you have mastered breakfast for a healthy approach, you're probably ready for some lunch ideas. And I have a great video for you up here. Jump into that video and I'll see you in there.